passion. Stemming from a Latin word that means to suffer. Passion is something that we associate today with an intense drive, sometimes even an intense obsession to do something, to be good at something, to keep us pushing ever forward. For some, it might be riding a bike. For others, it might be drawing or playing video games or doing well in school, whatever it is. Most people have uh, a passion to do something. But what happens when you lack the passion to accomplish a goal or to pursue something that you're good at? Or conversely, what happens when you have that passion, but you're just not good enough at that thing? Today, I'd like to start a new series. I'm calling Don't Forget to Watch. Don't Forget to Watch is a series I'd like to do. I don't know how many episodes or weekly uploads, whatever. But the point of this is to highlight shows that I think people have overlooked or just haven't talked enough about, or at the very least, something that I care a lot about and I don't see getting enough attention, or at least the attention that it deserves. In today's episode, we will be covering Ping Pong, the animation. Ping Pong, the animation, is an adaptation of Ping Pong, parentheses, the manga, uh, written by Tayo Matsumoto, this beautiful man on the right here. And if you look at these fantastic panels that just immediately draw your attention, you see the emotion, the conviction, the attention to detail, the focus, even hints at deeper symbolism and the themes of someone in fact, a group of people who are very passionate about a sport. Right here is the opening clip to, uh, to the opening of the show. And as you can see, it's just a really insane, fluid form of animation. But nonetheless, one that's very passionate and expressive. Ping Pong the Animation was produced by Tatsunoko Production. Uh, some of you, maybe even most of you watching this, um, have no idea what it is that they worked on. Well, I'm here to tell you that they only worked on a small, you know, kind of insignificant project before, and I don't know how many of you might have heard uh, have you guys actually ever heard of Evan freaking Gellion? Yes, that's right. Tatsunoko Production helped animate Evan freaking Gellion. So you know that this show has some top-notch, amazing animation. Of course, Tatsunoko worked um, together with Gainax on Evan Gellion, but... That's besides the point. And to direct this bold, expressive sense of animation, my boy Masaki Yuasa, this man right here looking dapper as possible, put his foot in the door and said, hey, this show needs my magic touch. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with my boy Yuasa, he worked on several other extremely, extremely visually interesting shows, such as Space Dandy, Devilman Crybaby, and Kaiba. 
All right, so let's uh, you know get into the show here a little bit. So there's actually um, a fairly small group of like main characters in the show, but kind of a medium to large group of uh, supporting characters who get developed in their own right. But I just kind of want to talk about some of these main characters here today and how they relate to this theme of uh, passion within the show. So in no particular order, first of all, on the left, we have uh, Yutaka Hoshino, also known as Peko, this goofy looking boy who seems to just have, it just exude positivity or at least passion about, you know, whatever he's doing. Um, in the case of the show, it's usually going to be about ping pong, of course. And Peko has uh, an associated symbol with him. Most of the characters do, in fact. And his is the star. He thinks of himself as, as a hero, as the star of the show. And it is this mentality that greatly influences his friend Makoto Tsukimoto also known as Smile, that of course being an ironic nickname, and the two of them are uh, pretty close friends, both of whom bonded over the sport of ping pong. I myself am not very good at ping pong, but watching this show made me nonetheless extremely excited to watch it. Um, I know that uh, for some of you, if you are not, you know, particularly good at something that you don't really care about uh, depictions of it, you know, like in media or whatever. But ping pong, the animation, despite its name, isn't really just about ping pong. And it's not even about, you know, the, the themes of passion that I have been talking about. Um, there's also a great sense of heart within the show. Uh, this third character here, Kong Wenge is a character who uh, was playing on the Chinese uh, ping pong team. Um, and there was a kind of a little incident, something happened, and he got kicked off of the team and sent to Japan. And he is just not happy to be here. But he sees uh, Sukimoto and Hoshino who I will be calling uh, Smile and Peko, respectively, for the rest of the video. Um, and like he, he hears them playing, and then he goes down to kind of see them, and he wants to challenge uh, Smile, but ends up playing Peko. And, again, another character of passion, to be sure. But he just has this really strong sense of longing and, and purpose to go back to China to be uh, in, in his home country because he feels that he's kind of been dishonored by um, being sent to Japan and being kicked off of his team. And I don't want to spoil the show for you, of course, so I'm just going to kind of leave it there on his character, but I just want to mention one last thing, which is that he has uh, kind of like this strong but like subtle sort of connection with his mom who is implied to care very deeply for him. And it's kind of like, sure, he's passionate about ping pong. And, you know, he wants to play on the Chinese team because that's like his dream. But I think it's also because that he has this strong connection with his mom that makes him want to go back to China and kind of be with her, but also to prove to her that, like, he deserves her love because she is shown to be a very caring character um, within the show. And then uh, lastly, on the right here, we have my boy, Manabu Sakama, a.k.a. The Demon. And you'll, of course, notice right away that his eyes are super wonky. And uh, the show reveals that's actually because of his uh, astigmatism that he has, which is why, you know, he wears the glasses. But it works fantastically into the show with the in the way that um 
the way that it's presented because of his astigmatism is that he has difficulty seeing objects that are kind of uh, too far away. So like he's nearsighted, but objects that are, like I said, just too far away, kind of out there, not within his reach, become blurry. And it's because as a character, he is very passionate about ping pong, just like Peko, Smile, and uh, Wenge, but he's not nearly as good as the rest of them. And he wants to be. And he works harder than anyone else in the show. Not to say, that, of course, that the rest of them don't work as hard, or don't work hard, but my boy Sakuma puts in the work and he does everything that he can in order to be an excellent ping pong player. And so, uh, with the astigmatism thing, he, for most of the show, can't really see himself in like the long term in the future, and it's blurry for him. And he doesn't really know what he wants. He thinks that, you know, he wants to play ping pong. And uh, I can't tell you what happens to his character, of course, because I want you to go out and watch the show for yourself. But try to keep in mind what it would be like to have such a strong sense of passion towards something that you love, but not be good enough to pursue it to a level that uh, you can be proud of. And uh, there's one more character. I'm trying to actually remember his name. doesn't look like I have him here, but I know that there's another character. Oh, that's right. It's my boy, Ryuchi Dragon Kazuma. This dude right here, this 30-year-old looking man with his beautiful bald head is the embodiment of the words ping pong and passion. He works so incredibly hard, and he is so incredibly skilled at this game. And he is sort of like the, the pinnacle of ping pong within uh, the confines of the show. And I don't want to say everybody kind of looks up to him, but I will say that everybody kind of looks at him as a person to beat. In addition, of course, to Smile, who is also an excellent ping pong player in the eyes of my boy, Ryuichi Dragon Kazuma. And uh, before we wrap up this video, there is uh, one last thing I'd like for you guys to keep in mind here, and that is the concept of what it means to be a hero. For most of this video, I've been talking about passion, sure, but the themes of heroism are also very prevalent within the show, and each character sort of has uh, different views on heroism. Uh, for my boy Dragon, he doesn't quite believe in heroes for most of the show. While Smile has been looking for a hero, and Peko wants to be a hero, and lastly, Wenge ends up being a hero. Of course, I can't tell you how, but he, I will say that he is a hero to the team that he plays with. And for those of you out there who feel that they are passionate about something that they care deeply about, but they don't feel that they are good at whatever it is that they're passionate about, or that they're not good enough, and that you are waiting for your hero to come down and show you the way. Sometimes in life, you have to be your own hero. You have to sprout wings and rise up into the sky to accomplish your goals you have to put in the work you have to have the passion 
but you have to put in the work. And so I'd like to uh, conclude on that note. Thank you for watching. This has been the first episode of Don't Forget to Watch. Again, Ping Pong the Animation. A fantastic show that I hope that you remember to don't forget to watch. Thanks for watching.